crowd invites. There's a traffic jam in Harlem that's backed up to Jackson Heights. There's a scout troop short a child cruise ships to Ed Idlewild. Car 54, where are you? Hi, Kessel. Hi. Boy, you look in great shape. I'm always in great shape. Good, because you fight next Wednesday. I'm what? I'm what? <laughs> yeah, I signed you up for the Golden Glove Tournament. You signed me up? Yeah, I knew you'd forget again this year. Oh, wait a minute, Tootie. Look, Kissel, every year when the tournament starts, you come in here mad because you forgot to sign up again. Yeah, so this year I did it for you. Now, here are the details. You fight Wednesday night at Sunnyside Gardens, a guy called Tony Klazuski. Hey, how about that? Tony Klazuski. Yeah, we're proud of you, Roy. You're the first fighter to represent the 53rd Precinct in eight years. Yeah, ever since Officer Peterson signed up and fought in the heavyweight division. There was a guy with guts. The day after his first fight, he was right back on duty with his jaw wired in place. Well, fellas, I'm not in good shape. I've had this cough. <laughs> You're in great shape. Look, Kissel, this is what you've been talking about for years. Represent the old 53th in the ring. I know, but this is so sudden. I'm fighting a guy called Tony Klazuski at Sunnyside Gardens. What if he doesn't like me? I don't even know. Look, Kissel, if you're afraid. Afraid? I'm not afraid. I just don't think it was right for Tilly to take things into his own hands and sign me up without even telling me. Next thing you know, I'm fighting a guy called Tony Klazuski. Who may not even like me. At Sunnyside Gardens, Wednesday night. Kissel, you can't miss. How about that? You try to do somebody a favor. Tony Muldoon, report to Captain Block. What's that all about? I don't know. Is my hat out straight? Yeah. You know how the captain's been after me for neatness. Uh, how do I look? Fine. You look fine. Where's your gun? <laughs> oh, no. Gunther, you didn't lose your gun again. <laughs> Where could I have left it? Come on. <laughs> I'm not afraid. I just think a man has to be mentally prepared to fight. I'm not mentally prepared. You can see I'm not even mentally prepared. I know, I know. You wanted us, Captain? Oh, yes. Now, what was it I wanted to see you about? Now I remember. Your gun. My gun? We found it on a pickpocket who was brought in this morning. There must be some mistake. I already got a gun. Quiet. This is your gun. It could belong to nobody else. There are no bullets in it. The barrel is rusty, and the firing pin is gone. Uh, thank you, Captain. Uh, uh, I've been meaning to get it fixed. Don't you dare. You and Muldoon may get into a shooting situation, and the fact that your gun can't be fired may save Muldoon's life. <laughs> Will you try and hang on to it? I'm sorry, Captain, but it keeps falling out of the holster. I don't know what to do. I have a suggestion, but I shudder at the thought of a New York policeman walking around carrying a purse. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Leo, but how does a cop keep losing his gun? How? When you're a man like Tootie, with lots of things on his mind, and there is no mind, that's <laughs> not. <laughs> Judy! Oh, Schnauzer. Judy? Ed. How do you do? Hello. This is Judy Sanford. She works at Antoine's, where most of our wives get their hair done. Uh, excuse me. What are you doing here? I'm waiting for, for uh, Patrolman Tootie. Sergeant McBride said that he's in talking to the captain. That's right. Yeah, well, I'm on my lunch break. Do you think uh, Patrolman Tootie will be out soon? Oh, he'll be out soon. But whether he'll still be a patrolman, your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> Leo, here's your gun. There's someone to see you. Bye, Judy. Bye. Hello, Judy. Hello. You know Francis. Hi, Judy. Hello, Officer Muldoon. What is it? Well, uh, I, I don't know where to start. I knew it. You left my wife Lucille under the dryer too long, and all her hair fell out. Officer Tootie. Poor Lucille. She wanted to look like Jackie Kennedy. Now she's going to look like Nikita Chris Jeff. Officer Tootie, this has nothing to do with Lucille. It hasn't? No, it's, it's something personal. But you got to help me. Oh, sure. Come on into the squad room and tell us what it's all about. All right, thank you. What have we got? Dear sirs, through an arrow, my name was submitted as a participant in your Golden Gloves tournament. Good. In addition, I am at present convalescing from... <laughs> oh, 
All right, now tell us what it's all about. Well, I just heard that you entered one of your policemen in the Golden Gloves tournament. Yeah, he's going to fight a guy called Tony Klazuski. Oh, Officer Tony, <laughs> Officer Muldoon, you've got to stop him. He shouldn't be a fighter. Who shouldn't be a fighter? Antoine. Antoine? You mean the hairdresser? Yeah, his real name is Tony Klasuski. How about that? Tony Klasuski is Antoine the hairdresser. You've got to talk him out of fighting. He's the sweetest, the gentlest man who ever lived. He couldn't hurt a fly. Go on. Mind, never mind. He's such a gentle soul. He bakes cakes and brings them in. He, he does beautiful watercolors. He, he, he even knitted the sweater for me. And now he thinks he could be a fighter. Just because he won his first four fights. He won four fights. <laughs> Where were we? In addition, I am a present convalescing prom. A severe case of yellow fever. <laughs> now, 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 now. Please, talk him out of fighting. Before something happens to that sweet, beautiful face. <laughs> I don't know what I'd do without you. Do you think my husband will like my hair this way? He'll love it, Miss Stover. Brings out that flowing point, you. Oh, Antoine. Oh, did I hurt you? Hurt me? You have the touch of an angel. Coming. Am I done? Just a few more minutes, Mrs. Pistamacher. Oh, it's going to look ravishing. Oh, what will my friends say when they see me in a clip after hairdo? What will they say? They'll say, what is Elizabeth Taylor doing here in the box? Oh, Antoine! Antoine! Coming, Shetty. Have you ever seen a man with such a lovely nature? Yeah. What a sweet guy. He makes all the women happy. I know. When Lucille comes home from the beauty parlor, it takes her hours before she gets mean again. <laughs> He's noticed it. Huh? Shh, here he comes. Please talk to him. Hello, Judy. Back from lunch? Yes, Antoine, you know Officer Judy, Officer Muldoon? Hi. Hi. They have something they want to tell you. Look, Antoine, why should a nice guy like you ever... If it's about giving up my fighting, I'm sorry. Oh, but Antoine... Judy, I told you, I can't explain it, but it's just something I got to do. Look, it's 2 o'clock. I got to scatter some breadcrumbs for the little sparrows. Please, do something. It's no use. So he beat a few amateurs. Now he thinks he's going to be champ. The only thing that's going to convince him that he's not a fighter is when he finally gets up against a real pro and gets knocked silly. Ooh. Ooh. What is it? I think it could be arranged. Yeah. What are you talking about? Please, let us handle this. By tomorrow night, the last thing in the world he'll want to be is a fighter. Leave it to us. Oh, uh, Antoine. Uh, yes, please. Uh, you had us wrong. Yeah. Uh, oh, we're here because we think you have a great future as a fighter. Really? Sure. Uh, where do you train? Train? I train while I do my, my bird watching. Bird watching? Yes, I, I, I trot around Bronx Park and I watch all the beautiful birds. No kid. Yes, and yesterday I saw a yellow bully sap sucker. Really? How about that? Look, Antoine, if you want to be a real fighter, you have to go to a regular training gym. Now, it just so happens that a good friend of ours is Waxy Kilroy. Yeah, he owns Kilroy's gym. The best fighters train there. We'll get him to let you train there. Gosh, me training in a real gym? In fact, maybe we could even get one of the pros to spar with you. That'd be the most wonderful thing I ever heard. <laughs> it's all right. No, no, hang on. Oh, Antoine, you look like you're He'll be here any minute. You gotta come through for us. I don't like it. Haven't one of my guys knock out an amateur? It's unethical. Waxy, he's no fighter. And the sooner he fights it out, the better. I don't like it. Waxy, a wonderful girl's future happiness depends on it. Look, I want no part of it. Waxy. <laughs> Out of the ring. 
Wing. Here he comes. Is that the guy? Yeah, his name is Antoine. Oh, come on. Please, Waxy. Hey, Antoine. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Antoine, this is Mr. Kilroy. Mr. Kilroy, I can't thank you enough to give me this opportunity to train with real fighters. Here. These are from my garden. They're daffodils. Yeah. I would have knit you a tie, but I just couldn't find the time. Oh, come on. Please, Waxy. Edward, one of Kilroy's fighters needs a workout. Would you like to spar with him? Oh, yes, please. Spider. Okay, get in there and get some gloves and get in the ring. Yes, sir. Yeah, Waxy. That's the guy. I want it done quick. Looks look all right, Waxy. Anything, just quick. We'll never forget you for this, Kilroy. I may see this in my dreams for years. You're not going to hurt him? He won't feel a thing. Spider. Antoine. Spider McGovern. Spider McGovern? Gee, I saw you box in the garden. How can I ever thank you for letting me box with you? It's mutual. Come on, let's go. Oh, well, wait. Excuse me. Do you mind if I get a little pistol? If you just keep your hand like this here, on this side. Like Come on! Get it over. See for real. I want it quick. It's about to start. I can't look. You fellas are real sweet. Okay. Ah! Ah! Waxy, we Did you see him? One fighter in a thousand has that viciousness, that killer instinct, that sheer brutality that makes this whole business worthwhile. <laughs> Miss, you should be proud of him. <laughs> what did I say? What did I say? To my own mother, I never said anything so nice. Look, Waxy, we gotta convince him that he's no fighter. He's no fighter. He's a great fighter. I'm gonna sign him up. All I gotta do is take off a few of the rough edges, like teaching him not to bite or kick. Waxy, you don't understand. Antoine's not a fighter. He's not a fighter? What do you think happened in the ring over there? A minuet? But Waxy, you saw the look in the girl's eyes. We gotta do something for her. Is there anybody around who could lay him out cold? Sure, a guy like Sugar Ray Robinson. That wouldn't help. So what if Sugar Ray did beat him? That wouldn't humiliate him. Sugar Ray's beaten just about everybody in the world. What would happen if he got knocked out by a guy, let's say, 70 years old? Would that do it? Sure. Where are you going to find a guy 70 years old can hit like Sugar Ray Robinson? Ooh. 